and now join us on the Word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Outreach Ministry as the Lord uses us to watch a clip of feeding the sheep. Our guest today is Pastor Sammy L. Jones. We are grateful and thankful to the Lord for this day and for this privilege and for this opportunity to share with you from the Word of God. Today I would like to share with you making right choices. Many times we as Christians we make choices that are not right choices and many times it gets us into difficulty and we sometimes wonder why our lives are not being as successful as we would like for them to be. So I'd like to just share some things with you and looking at Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now we asked ourselves, what things shall be added unto us? Well, let's just take another look at that and look at it really close. What he says to us, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, the Lord is telling us that He has no problem with us having things. But we need to bring ourselves into a place where we understand that we must do it God's way. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and by seeking God and His righteousness, we will get the understanding of what it is and how to enjoy these things. But when we seek the things and not the one who gives them, then many times they become what, what we call a liability instead of a blessing. Amen? Instead of a blessing. And, and, and we want things that we can enjoy and they're not a burden to us but many times we go after the wrong things and then if we are successful in getting them then they become a burden to us or sometimes drags us away from God so we want to get things in proper order so the Lord tells us first things first seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. What things? The things that you desire to have. The things that you desire to enjoy. And many times we have been taught about uh, houses and land and all of this. Well, and we've been taught how wealthy Abraham was. But we need to understand we must have that relationship with the Lord. That relationship with the Lord must be first before we seek the things. And at, because if we have that covenant relationship with the Lord and allow Him to direct our lives, then we're going to go after those things that will be beneficial to us. And when we get them, then they will be a blessing and not a burden. We will enjoy those things. But if we get them without God's blessing, then they're not going to be enjoyable to us. They're going to be a burden. Now, understanding this, and God spoke this to us, and the reason I'm starting here with this, because I want you to realize God wants us to make right choices. But it's up to us. It's up to us. See, we need to understand that God gives us that liberty to make choices, and God wants us to make choices, but He wants us to make the right choices. Now he tells us in Deuteronomy 11:26. he said, I set before you two ways, two ways, but my commandment to you is that you choose life. Amen? Let's just turn there and read that. Let's just look at it. We want to make sure that we get the word right, because what we do, we want to do it by the word of God, not say something that off the top of our head, we want to say it for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. 
Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 26 and it reads as thus Behold I set before you this day blessings and curses a blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you this day and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. So he says to us, he have set before us blessings and curses. Now, many times we can go after things that is not a blessing, which can be a curse. So God said, I set before you, and his desire is that we make right choices. We choose the right things. And many times we go after the wrong things. Even as Christians, many times we, 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 we are uh, struggling in life. And, and we've been told over the years sometimes that all you got to do is come to Jesus and everything is all right. That's not necessarily so. Because sometimes when we come to Jesus, we struggle with things that we have never struggled with before. But if we follow the commandments and the teachings of the Lord, God will guide and lead us into those things. Amen? And so we need to, as God set before us, and he gives us his commandment, then we are to search the word and understand what God is saying to us and get it in right order. You see, many times we, 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 we hear something because it's what we want to hear. And we're not listening for what the Spirit says to us. And, and just because someone else has this or someone else is enjoying this, maybe it's not your time yet. We need to get in and understand God's timing on a thing. So he said, I set before you two ways. I set blessings and I set curses before you. All right? Now, it's up to us to choose. And if we rebel against God, what do we get? We're going to get the curses. All right? Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. He enlarges on this a little more in chapter 30. He says to us in Deuteronomy 30 and 19, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life, and death, blessings and curses. Therefore choose life, both thou and thy seed may live. You see, God, God just doesn't give us things for right now. His idea and, and, and his commandments, the reason he gives us things is that he wants us to focus in on what he is saying because he's giving us Things that will take care of us now and things that will continue to take care of us. And even our seed. Listen to what he says. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Amen? So God is not only looking out for you, but he's looking out for your seed as well. See, God wants us to, to, to continue to walk in the blessings of the Lord. Amen? And, and, and if we do those things that God has said for us to do, we can walk in those blessings and we can enjoy life. But now those are choices you and I have to make. And we must make them based upon what God has said. God is never in a hurry. Amen? God is never in a hurry. So you and I don't need to get into a hurry. We need to take our time 
and, and be sure that we properly understand what God is saying to us. We want to get in there and, and what should mean more to us than anything else is to know that we have that covenant relationship with God, that intimate relationship with God. Know that we're walking. We can talk to Him and we can hear what He's saying to us. What else? Why would we get into Christianity? Or why would we call ourselves Christians if we're not going to go for the best? I believe in going for the best. And the only way we can get the best, we must understand what God is saying. Because God is not going to act on anything that He did not say. So you and I need to understand what God said. We, we, we hear a lot of things. And we're excited about a lot of things. Because in, 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 in our society, we look at what is called success. And every individual wants success. But what is really success? Real success is that which is found in God. When God has directed us, and, and when you know that you know that you've gotten something from God, now you've got something that you can really enjoy. But many times we hear things and, 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 and we want to impress other people. As Christians, we need to back away from this business of trying to impress other people because we get ourselves in all kinds of trouble. So we need to hear what the Lord is saying to us. Hear what he's telling us. And then he tells us in Luke 10, 19, he said, I have given you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, so God is telling us in each one of these scriptures that we've read, God is saying to us, here is blessings but their own condition. Here is a blessing. Here are the things that I'm offering you, I'm giving to you, but they are on condition. And that condition is that you make the right choice. Now, living in the world in which we live in, there's a lot of confusion. Yes, there is. Admittedly. But, if we really want to know, God will make it available to us. He'll either show it to us in his word or he'll send somebody across our path that will point out to us. But whatever God gives us, I can assure you, when it comes from God, it's going to line up with the word of God. Amen? It's not going to be anything contrary to the Word of God. It's going to line up with the Word of God. So we can trust God. We can rely on God. God will not promise us something that He will not give. But everything that He promised, it is on condition. And that condition is that you and I make the right choice. Amen? See, one of, one of, the, one of the things that we need to realize is, God doesn't want puppets. Amen? God wants people that are willing to serve Him because they want to serve Him. Amen? They're willing to, to, to do what thus says the Lord. And it comes from the heart. Amen? God wants it from the heart. So you and I must learn whatever we do it must come from the heart. So don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed to take time and search things out. If someone tells you something, you don't have to get upset or angry with them. Just lay it on the shelf. But don't throw it away. Amen? Because, see, God wants you to know for yourself. Amen? And so I always encourage people, listen, even if I tell you something, don't just take it at face value. Take the word. Search it out. Search it out for yourself. Get to know it for yourself. Because, see, once you know something for yourself, 
No one can take it away from you. If you have an experience with God, now you know what God can do. And you know what God will do. Amen? You see, so, 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 so don't get excited and don't get bent out of shape when you hear something perhaps you've never heard before or you hear something new and it doesn't line up with what you are accustomed to. Get the book. Take the book. If you don't know where to find it, ask somebody to help you find it. Find it and look at it for yourself. There is something uh, uh, um, that, that, that's really uh, significant about looking at a thing, seeing it for yourself. Because once you see something, you know that it's there. If you check the book for yourself and you know that it's there. So God is saying to us in his word, and if we check God's word for ourselves and not rely on someone else, and all too often we as Christians, we want to rely on someone else to rightly divide the word for us or to interpret the word for us when we need to look at things for ourselves and ask God. So now he tells us in Luke 10, 19, Let's look at Luke 10, 19. In Luke 10, 19, he said, Behold, I have given unto you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing. Now listen to what he says. I have given you the power over all the power of the enemy. And when you break this down in the Greek word, it means the authority of the enemy. He has given us power, ability to act against the enemy. But we must remember that power and that ability comes from God. It's not ours. It comes from God. You see, as we, as we look at it and as we understand it, see, God has given us, we have uh, the rights and we have the authority in this earth realm. But the ability to carry it out comes from God. So we need to know then that, that, that we, we are dependent on God in order to carry out what God tells us. So we need to know what God says. We don't need to go by something someone else has said. We need to know what thus says the Lord. So my encouragement to you is that you search this thing out for yourself. So listen what he said. Behold, I have given you. He's not going to give us. He's already given it to us. It's ours. Behold, I've given unto you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing. Now if God says nothing shall by any means hurt you, what does it mean? It means nothing shall by any means hurt you if we do what thus said the Lord. But we've got to know for ourselves. All too often we as Christians, we fail to learn for ourselves. We depend on the pastor or we depend on the, uh, 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 the Bible teacher or whatever, and, and, and we won't take the time. And many times we sit down and we make notes. And how many times do we go back through those notes to check those notes out? I say if we make notes, then sit down and remind yourself of what was said. Go through the notes. Meditate on those notes. Ask God to give you the revelation from what was said. You see, and God will give us revelation. God will uncover himself. God will reveal himself to us through his word. If we would but just seek after it. So he said, I have given you the power. And as we look at these scriptures, we look at what God has given us. Now, first he says, seek first the kingdom of God. What is he saying? He's saying, you seek it out. You make the effort. Seek it out. Don't depend on someone else. Seek it out. Talk to God. Pray. That's why God gave you the ability to pray. That's why God gave you not give you knowledge. 
And then he said, I set before you two ways. And then again he said, I set life and death, blessings and curses. But I say to you, choose. Choose. You see, many times we are going through life, we're angry, we're frustrated, we're, we're upset, and seems like everybody is succeeding, but here I am, I'm a failure. I can't get anything right. Why? Maybe we need to go back and check our lives and see how obedient are we to God. See, God will not let you down. God will not let you down. And then he tells us as we go further in Acts 1 and 8. He tells us, I have, in Acts 1 and 8, he tells us, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judah and Samaria and unto the utmost parts of the earth. Now here God is telling us the ability to do what I have called you to do is available to you. Listen, he said, you shall receive power after that. So he's telling us there's a condition that has to be met. Amen? There is a condition that you and I have to meet. So all we have to do is settle down and meet that condition. Amen? Meet the condition. And we need to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. Because without the Spirit of God, we're not going to be able to do the thing God wants us to do anyway. Amen? So, we need to make up in our minds that whatever God has said in His Word, that I'm going to condition myself to put this thing into practice. We, we, you see... No one else can do it for you, but you. So it's up to you. So this is why God has given us all these choices. Now, as we look at this, we find that he tells us how to get this ability to overcome the works of the enemy. And when you and I become children of God, you and I are the enemies of Satan. And don't think that he's going to just step back and let you go. You're going to have to fight. You are like a soldier. You have entered into an army and you are in a war. And this war is something that you're going to do for the rest of your life. And Satan is not going to just let you be victorious. You're going to have to take the things that God has given us and learn to be victorious through the things that God has given us. And, 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 and this is something that we need to really look at and understand. That's why he says we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. Amen? Amen. We are soldiers. And what does a soldier do? A soldier fights. So God said, I have given you the power. I have given you the ability to do the things that you need to do. But are we taking that? Are we taking that power? Are we taking that ability and walking as God would have us to walk? Or are we relying on someone else and finding all kinds of reasons why we can't do this? No. We can do it. We can do it because God has already given us the ability to do this. We ask ourselves a question. Why so much failure? Why so much failure among Christians today? Why so much struggle? Why so many uh, 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 ideas and yet we find that many times the ideas are not working? 
Why? One of the reasons we get caught up in tradition, many times our tradition dictates our behavior instead of the Word of God. And God is not going to back anything that He did not say. Amen? We are going to have to go by what thus said the Lord. Now look at it. In Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11. Let's just turn there and look at this. In Isaiah chapter 55, and I want to look at more than verse 11, because there's some things God says to us there, and, and, and I believe we need to get a hold of those things. And I'm going to go back and look at some of the other things that I've already said to you, because I want to get this message across. I believe we have moved into a place today as the people of God that we can no longer just slide along as before. You know, we, 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 we take too many things for granted. God wants people who really want to do what's right, who really want to be a blessing, who really not just looking for things for themselves, but they want to get into a place where they can be a blessing to others, just, just as God, before Abraham could really be anything, God says to Abraham, he said, look, I will bless you. And the reason God blessed him, that you may be a blessing. And that should be the desire of every one of us. We should not be so concerned about raking in things for ourselves, but we should look at God's people. And our desire should be not only to take care of uh, 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 my family or uh, uh, myself and, and my foe and no more. We need to be concerned about the entire body of Christ. You see, the greatest key and the greatest success in this Christian race is when we learn how to love God's people. And you see, when we learn how to love God's people, then we are not going to talk about them or backstab them. But we are going to love them just as they are. We are not going to try to make them what we think they should be. And all too often this happens among Christians. We always put our judgment on a thing. If, if, if it doesn't meet my requirements, then it's not God. No. Every person has to be given the privilege and the opportunity of making things right with God for themselves. Our responsibility as preachers and teachers and pastors is to teach them what thus said the Lord. Not our tradition, not our denomination, but what thus said the Lord. When we teach them the Word of God and give them the opportunity to make that choice, all too often we try to put people into where we think they should be. We get into God's stead and instead of letting the Holy Spirit do His job, it's the Holy Spirit's job to bring people into proper order with God. But all too often we try to get into God's stead. We, we try to get in and set people where they should be or where we think they should be. No, our job is to encourage them to read the Word of God, and we are to read the Word of God. And when we stand before God's people, we are to tell them what thus saith the Lord, not what I think or what I feel, but what thus saith the Lord. We, 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 we put people in bondage. We, we enslave people because we don't tell them what thus saith the Lord. You see, it is God that we all are going to stand before. It is God that we all are going to give an account for. And believe it or not, we, we, we can laugh or make fun of it or make it light if you want to. But Jesus is coming back. 
And he's coming back for a people who have prepared themselves. Who have made choices. Choices that lines up with what he has said. And you're going to do it of a free will. Not because someone has intimidated you or, or, or manipulated you into this thing. You're going to do it knowing full well what you're getting into. Times are going to be rough. Yes, they will. You're going to struggle through things. Yes, you will. But because of your commitment to God, you are going to make up in your mind and be determined that regardless of what I have to face, God, I'm going to stand. Why? Because if you take the time and study God's Word and let God's Spirit deal with you and get into that proper place where God would have you to be, then you are going to walk the way God wants you to walk. Well... God bless you. Thank you for joining us on the Word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Outreach Ministry as we watch the clip of Feeding the Sheep. I pray that you got something out of it and got encouraged. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850-247. God bless you. And again, thank you for watching. In Jesus' name, amen.